हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल डेंटिस्ट्री टू द पॉइंट दिस इज डॉक्टर ध्रुमिल मानिक एंड इन दिस अपकमिंग वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक विच इज स्टिल इम्पॉर्टेंट वेन वी कम और वेन वी डिस्कस अबाउट फैब्रिकेटिंग अ कम्प्लीट डेंचर राइट सो इट इज़ नॉट नेसेसरी दैट एवरी टाइम यू आर गोइंग टू फैब्रिकेट अ कम्प्लीट डेंचर यू आर गोइंग टू गेट अ आइडियल रिच विच इज वेरी गुड इन कंडीशन अकॉर्डिंग टू द हेल्थ हाइट एंड ऑल द पैरामीटर आर फुलफिल्ड for an ideal complete denture but there will be situations encountered repeatedly where you will have to undergo some procedures which are mandatory before you start fabricating your complete denture and that topic is mouth preparation for complete denture right so this involves various procedures which are required to be done priorly before we fabricate the complete denture so i have divided this topic into three segments in which we'll be discussing three different parts of the mouth preparation involved in complete denture that is the non surgical surgical as well as the rich augmentation this is the part 1 in which we'll be discussing about the non surgical so i would request you all to watch this video thoroughly and go through the non surgical procedures and then we'll discuss about the further parts thank you so much and hope you guys enjoy the video So hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss about a very important topic, that is from the complete dentures, uh, that is mouth preparation for complete dentures, right? So what does this topic or the heading mean? Mouth preparation for complete denture. That means you are preparing the oral cavity so that you can fabricate a successful complete denture in maxilla as well as mandible or in any one of the arches wherever this. procedures are required right so what is mouth preparation for complete denture this mainly includes the uh, procedures which are going to be performed to correct the hard and soft tissue discrepancies that means our oral cavity that is when we consider an edentulous mouth so that is involving both hard as well as soft tissue right so there can be discrepancy in hard tissue or in the soft tissue or in both the tissue right so which might affect the fabrication of your complete denture it may be the design of complete denture it may be the impression procedure which you are involving to fabricate the complete denture right it may be the selection of teeth so there can be many factors which are involved and which may create discrepancy and may not allow you to fabricate a successful complete denture so now what is the objective or what is the reason behind uh, doing the procedures for mouth preparation right so it improves the denture foundation so your dentures are going to lie or rest on the alveolar ridges right you have maxillary as well as mandibular ridge so the dentures are going to rest on that foundation so it go it is going to improve the quality as well as the uh, the i mean mainly the quality of the denture foundation and along with that if there is any problem in the ridge relation that means you have ridge relation in terms of anterior posterior ridge relation as well as medio lateral ridge relation right so anterior posterior ridge relation is your class 1 class 2 or class 3 profile right class 1 is the ideal condition whereas wherein the maxilla is 1 or 2 am 2 mm ahead of the mandible in ideal class 1 relationship whereas in class 2 the mandible is way more behind than the maxilla right and in class 3 there is prognathic mandible which is ahead of the maxilla so these are the ridge relations in anterior posterior and medio lateral also there is cross bite there is unilateral cross bite so that are your medio lateral ridge relation so in these condition is it is going to improve the foundation of the denture and the ridge relation then moving on to the support it enhances the support of your complete denture that is the supporting tissues mainly your alveolar ridges it is mainly yes the main target is to restore the form function of the stomatognathic system and lastly aesthetics are also going to be improved the patient is going to have a more better and a pleasing appearance right so this is mouth preparation of complete denture that is the introduction and objectives now there are various methods of mouth preparation so mainly there are three methods of mouth preparation first one is your non surgical surgical and ridge relation right so there are three methods which are involved in the mouth preparation so firstly we'll start with the discussion of non surgical methods of 
mouth preparation so now what are the non surgical methods non surgical method is mainly going to concentrate on the non invasive ways that is you are not going to do any invasive procedure right any surgery or anything you are just going to give rest and uh, the care which is required based on the symptoms and the clinical condition right so that is that involves mainly four to five procedures that is first is your you can use tissue conditioners adjunctive adjunctive care and then removal of retained dentition or roots if there is any presence of remaining teeth or the root stumps or root fragments that are also to be removed then removal of unerupted teeth correction of hypermobile ridges and removal of soft tissue interferences right so these are the main headings which will which we will be dealing in terms of the non surgical methods which are required in the mouth preparation so in this discussion mainly we'll study about the non surgical methods and in the following parts of this topic we'll study about the surgical methods as well as the third that is your ridge augmentation right so starting with your non surgical methods so firstly before starting with any non surgical methods the main thing which you have to keep in mind is your points which are to be followed along with your non surgical methods or prior before you start the non surgical treatment or the options for your mouth preparation right so first is you need to provide adequate rest to the denture bearing tissues right so adequate rest is going to provide time for the present clinical condition to improve right so what happens is whenever what is meant by providing rest to the denture bearing area that means if the patient is already a complete denture wearer right he is already wearing complete denture and due to that denture he is having some lesion ulceration or it may be epulis fissuratum also right so these are the main problems which you see in the dentures which are fabricated with not proper borders or proper protocols right so in that uh you need to ask the patient to discontinue the dentures don't wear them for some time provide some rest along with that gum massage and mouth washes also should be provided right so when you provide these type of rest or discontinuing of denture that improves your clinical condition and then you can make a new denture which is more comf which is which is with more comfort and function right next you should always prioritize on establishing a optimum vertical dimension right so if you are not attaining a proper vertical dimension if your vertical dimension is increased or if it is decreased then there are many other consecutive factors which might happen this will be study when we discuss about vertical dimension but yes it can also affect your muscles and tmj also right so you need to establish proper vertical dimension advise the patient to have good healthy nutrition and conditioning of the musculature right so everything should be uh, kept in mind before we start the non surgical methods of your mouth preparation so next now first discussing about the tissue conditioners right so tissue conditioners firstly what are the tissue conditioners so tissue conditioners are the materials which are used intermediately during the mouth preparation procedures so mainly uh, for example if a patient is having extended denture borders so in that case he might have any ulceration or any redness or inflammation in that area right so in that case or uh, the patient has undergone any pre prosthetic surgery like ridge augmentation so in that case or in the cases where the tissues are very much sore and inflamed so you need to provide some rest and cushioning effect to the tissues so that there are not much uh, masticatory forces acting from the denture to the tissues right so in that case these are materials which are available which are going to remain soft in consistency so what we do is we are going to trim the denture borders and mix this material this is available in powder and liquid form so there are two type of tissue conditioners mainly there are long term and short term tissue conditioners these are mainly divided based on the time which are which they are to be changed long term can be changed from 1 to 3 months whereas the short terms are to be changed every 3 weeks right so these are mainly based upon polymethylmethacrylate compounds right so they are available in 
powder and liquid system so you just need to mix the powder and liquid based on the manufacturer's instructions and then once you've mixed you need to apply it on the denture borders and place the denture and carry out the movements which you do while taking the impression right so when you do those movements the borders are made of the borders which are formed are of soft material and when the patient is going to wear that it is going to provide some relaxing effect instead of the hard acrylic which you, which was hurting it and causing the tissues to inflame right so these are mainly tissue conditioners so we discussed a brief idea about tissue conditioners so what are they made of they are made up of mainly pm m a polymethyl methacrylate compounds and when are they used they are used in the conditions when the tissues are inflamed or due to any ulceration tissue soreness then patient undergone pre prosthetic surgery why are they used they are used because they provide cushioning effect right to the tissues which provides comfort right so these are the advantages and how are they used this is mainly available in powder and liquid system so you mix apply give the movements remove the excess and place the denture right so this is about the tissue conditioners next discussing about the adjunctive care so in this i already said like conditions like ulcers lesions or abscesses which are present or which might be there when you are going to radiographically evaluate the patient of complete denture you're going to take a ortho opg ortho pantomograph and you're going to see whether if there is any remaining retained dentition or any other pathology associated in relation to those maxillary and mandibular ridges so you need to evaluate that and immediately there should be first priority given to that problem that should be treated first and with sufficient rest following you can start with the fabrication of complete denture as i already mentioned before tissue massages and mouth washes are also to be given so conditions like ulcer lesion abscess immediate treatment and sufficient rest then moving on to removal of retained dentition oh, okay so now as i said radiographically when you will evaluate you will find you may find that there is any retained teeth which is present which was not erupted throughout the life and it is lying so that you need to evaluate if there is any root fragment mainly in the last posterior teeth when the patient might have got extracted the seven or eight that is your second or third molar there are chances that any root fragment might be there or the teeth might have got carriers decayed and the root fragments might be covered with the tissues that conditions are also seen right so in those cases what happens is you need to check thoroughly if there is any root fragment present it should be removed so now there is a situation for example this is your surface of your ridge right and a root fragment is lying root fragment is lying somewhere over here and one more condition where root fragment is lying in this area or an unerupted teeth is lying in this area right so this is a root fragment this is a unerupted teeth so now these are two different conditions here the root fragment is lying firstly just beneath the reed ridge just beneath the surface of the ridge it is more closer to the tissues that means more closer makes the tissue overlying it to be thin so tissue over here is going to be thin right in this case it is lying more deeper and this is an unerupted teeth right so less harmful and more invasive procedure is required 
right so in these two cases if you find such clinical scenario you need to go with the removal of the root fragment but in these cases you might leave the unerupted teeth without disturbance and you can make your dentures if they are way below the surface of your ridge and the amount of invasiveness or the depth you will need to go inside and remove the tooth and that might create more uh, lesion in that area due to the surgery and then might lead to res resorption right so all these factors are also to be considered and so that is all about your uh, retained dentition removal of roots or root fragments right so lastly one more point removal of soft tissue interferences so there are chances that there will be soft tissue impingement that is the tissue might get stuck between the denture border and the ridge surface that is between the denture border and ridge this mainly happens in overextended borders so in that areas you need to remove these interferences right so that also should be taken care of. sometimes there are of uh, uh, over that is highly positioned uh, labial frenum or buccal frenum that we'll discuss in the surgical methods of mouth preparation right so this is about your uh, non surgical methods so we'll just recall everything once wind up and then we'll meet with the next discussion in the next video so mouth preparation of complete dentures is a procedure which is mainly performed to correct the soft tissue discrepancies which might affect the foundation or fabrication of complete denture so what are the objectives why are we doing it it improves the denture foundation support increased form and function is received improved aesthetics there are three methods non surgical surgical and ridge augmentation today we discuss about the surgical methods in which we have tissue conditioner adjunctive care removal of retained dentition if there is any unerupted teeth hypermobile ridge or removal of soft tissue interferences so firstly adequate care established vertical dimension good nutrition and proper conditioning of the muscles and tissues should be done firstly tissue conditioners we discuss what are tissue conditioner what are they made of why are they used when are they used and how are they used then we discuss about the adjunctive care in which various situations like ulcers lesions should be treated first sufficient rest rest should be provided and then we can move on with the fabrication then removal of retained dentition and roots or any unerupted teeth right so this was we discussed and lastly the soft tissue impingement so all these things are involved in the non surgical methods now in the next we'll discuss about the surgical methods and following which we will we'll, we'll be dealing with the ridge augmentation procedure so this was all about the first part of mouth preparation in complete denture i hope you guys understood the topic and got a thorough idea about what are the procedures involved so you can use these points to write your answers if such questions are coming up in your exams and you need to go with answer which is precise and accurate of what is being asked right so thank you so much for giving your time and watching our videos on dentistry to the point see you soon with a new topic bye bye take care Thank you.